I like the GNOME desktop environment. I know that might be a sort of controversial opinion, uh, especially as the criticisms continue to grow around the design philosophy that the team has adopted and sort of, you know, we're going to make this desktop environment the way we want and we're going to kind of like squeeze you into the workflow whether you like it or not. A lot of criticisms against GNOME tend to revolve around them removing features or changing pretty substantial portions of their paradigm almost on a single update. But I, although those criticisms are valid, I don't think it should necessarily undermine the incredible work that the GNOME team has done in creating such a unified and polished desktop environment. Uh, today, I want to take you through the extensions that I use as a sort of you know, top 15 extensions. Um, these are the ones I use to kind of fill in the gaps that I feel like the GNOME team has left in their desktop environment, gaps that I certainly would like to... to incorporate into my own user experience. But as it stands now, the GNOME desktop environment is completely usable from a vanilla experience. So on my screen, I have vanilla GNOME running. You can see here that there's no like minimize, maximize button. There's just the window. And you can drag that window, you know, like a Windows 10 or Windows 11 thing where you just drag it to the corners and it maximizes or minimizes. Um, but as far as the desktop environment is concerned, everything kind of starts and stops with this activities button. So when you click uh, in activities, you get the overview where it has your virtual desktops and a search bar up here at the top. And then it has your dash down here at the bottom with your favorite icons and then your virtual desktops, which you can scroll through there. If you want to get into the rest of your applications, you have to come over here and click show applications and then it'll populate the rest of your applications where you can just launch them by clicking on them or dragging them to a desktop. Now, this is where I think there's some unvalid or invalid criticism of GNOME because people hate that you have to click on this and then click on this two clicks to get to your applications, but they're using it wrong. Just like on Windows, um, Windows 10 or Windows 11, you can just hit the super key or the Windows key and it pops it right up. And not only that, when you hit that and start typing, say I want to type in VLC, this is how I use it. I don't really go to the mouse a whole lot. The way I use my desktop environment is I'll just hit the super key, type VLC, and away we go. Right? That's the, I would say, the more correct way of using GNOME. All that being said, I want to take you through the um, extensions I use. And, and kind of how I tweak them as a sort of like top 10, <laughs> whatever. Um, top 10 G GNOME extensions list, which is truly the pinnacle of human artistry here on YouTube. All right, um, coming over here, let's, let's talk how to install them first. I'm on extensions.gnome.org. Uh, for the time being, this is how you have to install extensions unless you wanna just you know download them directly from the GitHub. There's no like GUI built into GNOME where you can get these yet. I've read that that feature is coming through the extensions application, but it's not currently implemented. So you come over here, you search for whatever you need. Let's say dash to dock, which I've already got installed. Click on dash to dock, and then you'll have a toggle over here where you can install it or uninstall it. I've got it installed right now, but it is currently set to off. So I can show you guys the basic vanilla GNOME experience. So that's GNOME extensions. Closing that out, uh, let's open up extensions. Hey, look at that, I pressed super key and started typing and there we go. These are the extensions I currently have installed. Um, Arch has some built-in extensions down here, which I also have off. I've got all my extensions set to off. I don't really use any of these built-in extensions except for uh, user themes, which allows me to change um, the, the default shell uh, theme. Right now I have it on at WIDA anyway, so it's not a big deal. But let's let's turn these on and go through them one by one. Let's toggle all of these off. And we'll just go through alphabetically and why I selected these. Uh, the first one I have selected here is the Arc menu. What the Arc menu does is it replaces the activities button over here, which again takes us into our overview. And it replaces it with a really highly customizable app launcher. 
And so I'm not going to take you through all the ins and outs of Arc Menu because that honestly would be a video in and of itself. But you can kind of see the depth and extensibility of this little application. It's great. Uh, the way I have it set up currently is I'll press one super key to toggle it. And it gives you this like drop down menu, pretty similar to the Pantheon desktop environment. Uh, and it has the search up here. So now when I press super, it doesn't take me an overview, but the functionality has remained unchanged if I start typing VLC. I have to spell it correctly first. If I start typing VLC, it pops up VLC, I can hit enter, and it'll just open. Uh, the second, let's close that out. The second application here, uh, Caffeine. Caffeine is a little widget up here at the top that disables suspend and screensaver, which um, I, I find highly usable in my day, daily activity. Again, I, I teach music, and so I'll put like, videos or lesson plans or daily agendas up on my overhead projector and it's nice to disable the screensaver and auto suspend when I'm doing that so it doesn't just like peter out halfway through my class or five minutes into my class I just leave this on pretty much all day it's also nice when I'm rendering videos or doing other work where I'm not necessarily always engaged with my computer to prevent it from shutting down there is another application that you can get or another extension you can get called um, Espresso, which functions pretty much the same way. It has a little bit more customization and options available to it. But for me, caffeine is just like on, off, really easy to use. I don't really need the extensibility that uh, Espresso offers, so I use caffeine. This third one here, Dash to Dock, this is probably the one I would recommend everyone to use. Uh, what Dash to Dock does is it turns, oh, I can't get to my Dash anymore. It turns the dash that was in the overview into a dock similar to Mac OS. So if I toggle that, you'll see it come down here at the bottom. So it turns the dash into a dock, right? That's why it's called dash to dock. Um, this is really usable for me, especially since I have the arc menu over here. So now I don't have to go into the overview at all, which again is ent entirely up to you whether you or not you want to use overview. I don't really care to use the overview that much because it's really just like a graphical way of doing things I can do with my keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so I don't, I don't feel the need to get into it. And so having my favorite applications down here, similar to like a Mac OS style setup, um, I find really nice and usable. This one here, hide top bar window. So we have, you can see this button extensions. Let me open up like Google Chrome. Let me come over here, my personal one. Opening up Google Chrome here. Um, it almost wants to function as a global menu. I'm not really sure what the point is because everything you would want to do in Google Chrome, you can just do in Google Chrome or you can just do in the extensions window. And the options that they offer you here are so limited. New window, new incognito window. I mean, most people are just going to be doing that from the browser itself. And it's even more limited with something like extensions, show details and quit. Yeah, I have an X button. You know, I don't really need to come over here to click that. I don't understand what this is doing here. I feel like this might just be an artifact from older versions of GNOME that they haven't decided what it's going to be or whether or not it should continue. So it's just like this vestige. Um, so because of that, because I have no use for it, I haven't found a good use for it. I just have this hide top bar window, toggle it, away it goes, just cleans up the top bar a lot. Uh, and now I don't have to deal with it because I know what window I'm working in when I'm working. I don't need something up here to remind me. And all of the options I need are usually in the little hamburger drop down on the application itself. If I need to close something, hey, guess what? I can just close it. It's pretty great. All right, no overview at startup. When you log into GNOME, every single time you log into GNOME on the vanilla experience, you're going to be taken immediately into your overview so you can launch the applications you're going to need. You'll see your desktop, and, uh, virtual desktops, all of that jazz. Again, since I have my system set up where I don't really need to get into the overview. I kind of found it silly that I was booting into the overview. So this extension here, no overview at startup, just prevents me from seeing the overview when I start up. There's no customization options here, just disables the feature completely. Uh, this one, status area, horizontal spacing. You'll notice up here in my status area that what amounts to my um, system tray, all of these applications are equidistant. But then when I come over here to Caffeine, there's like this big buffer here, and that's because of this little pill box that surrounds each of these widgets. I don't like seeing that. I understand why it's there from like a 
I don't know, a design perspective, but I really hate the fact that they are separate when I'm just like working and I can see it out of the corner of my eye. So this one here, status area, horizontal spacing, when you toggle it, it just gets rid of that. And when you come into settings on this one, you can change the padding. Uh, I just remove the padding all the way so that they're all equidistant. And it does make the pillbox look a little weird when you highlight or when you hover over it, but that's such a minimal thing for me personally when the trade-off is I get to see these all equidistant as I'm working. So that's just like a purely aesthetic thing. And then the last one, uh, but certainly not the least, is transparent top bar, adjustable transparency. I like, oh, that's the settings. Let's talk about that. I like this one um, just because I don't like the completely opaque top bar. Um, I, I think it just makes the desktop environment a little bit sharper when you're using it. And I like that the transparency is adjustable within the settings because I can, you know, make the make the two, the top bar and the bottom bar match in terms of opacity or transparency. Um, another thing that's really neat about this one is if it detects collision, it turns completely opaque, which is nice when you go into full screen that you don't have like this weird transparent top bar. And then when you pull it back, it goes back to transparency. So these are the extensions that I use. Um, they're by no means ex exhaustive. People will use, you know, dozens and dozens of app or extensions in order to customize their GNOME experience. But I, I want to reiterate that they're not necessary. And in fact, if you're coming into GNOME for the first time on what amounts to the vanilla experience, like on Arch or Endeavor OS or Fedora, like anything that ships the default GNOME experience without extensions, um, I would just test drive it for a couple weeks and get to know the system as the team has designed it before you start fiddling around with extensions. That being said, uh, I found these extensions to suit my workflow better. Um, feel free to jump in and you know use them or not. It's not sweat off my back. I don't really care. But these are the ones that I use. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you like the video, I'd really appreciate you know clicking the like button or even subscribing if you want to follow more of my content. Um, a lot of work goes into these and, you know, it's, it's an easy way to support the channel. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video.